I'm going to impart a little bit of personal wisdom on you here. You can have the greatest script and the best on-screen talent in the world, but if your editor is bad, so is your final product. Yes, this is me praising our editing team. Do not get used to it. But still, until that particular skilled individual is wrangling all the various takes of every scene and stringing them together into a concise but coherent feature, nobody knows if they're heading to the Oscars or the Razzies. While what stays in the film is obviously very important, sometimes what's taken out can count for even more, and sometimes an entire film is saved with one small editing decision. One proof? Well, I've got a load of classic films you probably love here, and you're going to see just how close they came to getting ruined. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are eight deleted scenes that almost ruined great movies. Number eight, Marty fears he'll turn gay. Back to the Future. Before heading off to the Fish Under the Sea dance, Marty and Doc discuss the implications of their plan to get the former's parents together by using him as bait. You see, like everyone in the audience did an hour ago, Marty's figured out how batch weird it is that he's going to be hitting on his mother and is worrying what effect it'll have on him in the long run. What if it turns him gay? Great Scott! I mean, yeah, it's slightly not okay that, while part of Back to the Future does deal in literal incest, it never directly addresses it. This scene not only undercuts that, but takes it to the next level with a bizarre, homophobic remark that would feel a bit awkward coming from a mad professor from the 1950s, let alone progressive 1985 Marty McFly. Number 7. Deckard and Rachel Bump Uglies Blade Runner. Most of Blade Runner's well-known, air quotes, deleted scenes have actually wound up in one of the 10 billion available edits of the film, but this one, however, hasn't appeared in any version, and for good reason. After the moment where potential replicant Deckard forces definite replicant Rachel to kiss him, things take a more racy turn with a pretty explicit sex scene that runs just long enough to ensure you'd never want to watch the film with your parents. Deckard forcing himself on Rachel is a surprisingly pivotal scene in the movie, making the audience question whether Rick really is the indie-style hero Ford's casting indicates. The sex is suggested, sure, but actually showing it puts more focus on the act itself rather than what it signifies. The steaminess of it all attempts to distract you from the fact you are witnessing what is, in reality, an assault. Number 6. Sergeant Candy, Terminator, Rise of the Machines. I mean, just, oh, just, just look at this. Look at the absolute state of that. From a timeline perspective, it makes little sense. Skynet, Cyberdyne, Cyber Systems, whatever, are shown developing the ultimate killing machine back in 2004, yet we know from the original film that Arnie model wasn't being used until sometime in the 2020s. Of course, to get worked up about continuity in a series that views consistency strictly as an optional perk is a bit of an off point. What's more potent about the scene is how it just completely destroys the terror of the original movie. Having Darth Vader scream, no! at the loss of Padme was a bit cringe, but seeing the origin of one of the most deadly movie machines reduced to a gurning Texan Schwarzenegger is a flat-out crime. Number 5. Aragon's Age, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. The Lord of the Rings books are thicker than prison mints, so a lot had to get left out when the movie adaptations rolled around. One thing that nearly made it, though, was a scene when Aragon reveals he's 87 years old to Eowyn over a bowl of bad soup. For people who can actually pronounce the Silmarillion, the extended editions are the best thing since Second Breakfast, but for everyone else, they're full of needless plot diversions that raise mythos points that can never, ever get paid off. In films that are already pushing your bladder to its limits, that is a deal breaker. Look, maybe I'm giving audiences too much credit here, but knowing the very much human Aragon is 87 just makes no sense without a lengthy explanation of the aging of Middle Earth men, and that is quite bad. Number 4. Luke and Biggs in Anchorhead. Star Wars. One of the most notorious deleted scenes from the original Star Wars trilogy, there's an entire sequence dealing with Luke witnessing the opening space battle from the planet's surface. He heads to Anchorhead to tell his friends, who don't believe him, pfft, some mates, but he does get to reunite with childhood friend Biggs, who is seen later in the movie before being swiftly killed in the final battle. The scene itself isn't bad, I mean, it shows what Luke's life on Tatooine was like beyond simply watching sunsets and being a disrespectful little sh**, and it invests time in Biggs, whose death is rather lacking in impact otherwise. But its inclusion would have totally derailed the pace and the tone of the opening, meaning Star Wars would have felt less like an expansive space epic and more like George Lucas remaking American Graffiti in the desert. Number 3. The Cocoons 
Alien. Alien went to great lengths to explain the xenomorph's life cycle. Eggs contain facehuggers, which attack humans, implanting a fetus in their chest and, well, you know the rest. In the sequels, it's revealed the eggs came from a queen, but the first film originally had Ripley come across Dallas and Brett cocooned in the alien's lair, in the process of being transformed into more eggs. That's a nice idea, sure, but at the time, Ridley Scott didn't have a clear plan for what the next step in the xenomorph's life cycle was going to be. Compared to the explicitly detailed oral rape of the facehugger, the whole cocoon thing is very bland. As a result, this scene is little more than a this-looks-cool moment and a blatant excuse to shoehorn in some more of H.R. Geiger's designs. Number two, The Thing Escapes. The Thing. At the end of The Thing, Kurt Russell and Keith David sit in the burning wreck of their Antarctic research station, swigging whiskey as the camera bleakly zooms out, and it is perfect. The original cut, however, went a bit longer, showing the morning after as a sled dog, one of the titular shape-shifting alien's most favoured forms, runs away from the camp. Whether or not Childs or McCready are actually the thing at the end of the film still hasn't definitively been answered, meaning we can still talk about John Carpenter's minor masterpiece 30 years on. In one single moment, this scene destroys all that ambiguity and thus the film's entire legacy. Number one. How about a little ice? Titanic. For a film with a runtime longer than the actual tragedy it's dramatizing, Titanic has an inordinately high number of deleted scenes. This particular one comes just as the ship hits the iceberg. The unsinkable Molly Brown asks a waiter for more ice and ho ho ho, a big chunk of it goes by the window behind her. Okay, so yes, it's funny, I'm not entirely joyless, but that James Cameron even humored this idea is ridiculous. Less than three hours after the time this cheap joke is meant to be made, 1,500 people had died in the freezing cold Atlantic. <laughs> is that how many people died in the Titanic? You see, you never, you never know who's written these scripts. How many people died? No, no, he's right. Good number. Fair play. Sure, some levity is needed in a three-hour movie about love and death, but it works better during scenes of DiCaprio trying to act posh rather than the moment when everyone is about to die. And that's our list. Which other deleted scenes could have ruined their movie? Shout them out in the comments below. And as ever, don't you dare think about forgetting to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, I've been What Culture's Adam Cleary, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.